this topic um, uh, it, it's uh, uh, based on our practice in the hospital whenever Ramadan is approaching uh, we receive plenty of patients with different diseases asking uh, asking us and uh, other uh, members of the healthcare uh, team uh, about Ramadan fasting and uh, although they know that some of them are exempted from fasting but they choose to fast and some of this group is uh, uh, the diabetic patients and um, um, uh, strangely that even the pregnant women who are exempted uh, uh, according to Quran and Sharia exempted from fasting uh, and then they can make up the fasting later after after they give birth they decide to fasting and uh, on top of that we, we we find that some of the diabetic pregnant women they choose to fast uh, during, uh, during Ramadan um, uh, first of all I will give you an idea about uh, the prevalence of uh, diabetes around the world and um, in 2000, uh, 2015, the International Diabetes Federation published their uh, Diabetes Atlas. And uh, the statistics show that 415 million adults with uh, diabetes globally and uh, um, 199.5 million are women. Uh, 318 adults um, are at high risk for developing diabetes or impaired glucose uh, tolerance. And um, <coughs> The projection for 240 is that uh, uh, from having one diabetic in ele among 11 adults, uh, it's expected that it will go down to one in 10 adults by 240. And um, if we look uh, for diabetes by gender, uh, for women uh, in 2015, we have uh, 199, as I said, 0.5 million uh, women with diabetes in 2040. Uh, it will uh, almost um, uh, increase by 313, um, to reach 313 million. And uh, it's expected that um, one in seven births are af is affected by uh, gestational diabetes, which is the type of diabetes that affects uh, uh, women during pregnancy. Um, uh, in 2015, the United Nations member states in New York uh, adopted the BOST uh, 2015 Development Agenda and Sustainable Development and one of the targets is uh, also uh, to tackle the non-communicable diseases and diabetes is one of them. Uh, all diabetes management and evidence-based practice guidelines uh, are aimed for individualizing care of, uh, of these people um, and, and the aim is to uh, attain the patient's um, physiological needs, uh, their psychological needs, and considering their cultural uh, backgrounds and cultural needs. Uh, several countries were not able to develop such guidelines. And um, we know that there are some guidelines uh, 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 designed or developed by Australians, by Canadians, by Americans, uh, by um, here in the UK. And um, why is that? That most of the countries don't have their own guidelines maybe because of the lack of expertise uh, or financial uh, resources and some of them they have lack of awareness uh, of the international diabetes uh, federation developed uh, guidelines now regarding ramadan uh, ramadan was last month uh, three weeks ago i think and um, uh, if you looked at the hours of fasting it is variable according to the geographical location uh, of the country. Um, this year, the shortest period of fasting was in um, Chile, 9.5 hours. This is the total duration of fasting. The longest hours of fasting uh, uh, is uh, in Iceland, 21 and a half hours. And um, we know that Ramadan fasting is obligatory for all adult Muslims and um, it's a lunar month so it will last between 28 days up to 30 days every year and regardless of the season sometimes it falls in uh, summer sometimes it falls in spring sometimes so different seasons different uh, uh, periods of fasting and um, uh, as i said earlier uh, some people are exempted from fasting including travelers pregnant and lactating women uh, menstruating women people who have uh, chronic diseases 
and they have fatwa or um, um, uh, permission to fast, uh, uh, to uh, not to fast during uh, Ramadan. And um, now, to have a, a good idea, I put this map uh, regarding the regional distribution of Muslims around the world. And uh, you can see that in, in Europe, 5.9% of, uh, of the Muslims in the world, they live in Europe. The majority in Asia Pacific region and um, uh, Middle East, 93% of the people uh, of, of the Muslims are living in the Middle East, Sub-Saharan 30% and 0.1% in uh, um, uh, Latin America and Caribbean, uh, North America 1%. If at the same map, when we looked at the projected number of Muslims by 240, we can see that there is an increase. For example, in Asia Pacific, the, they will increase a in number from 24.3 up to 28.3. <coughs> um, in Sub-Saharan, 34%. And in the Middle East, from 93%, it, it's almost the same. Uh, in Europe, from 5.9, they will uh, uh, represent 9% of the total number of Muslims around the world. Um, North America, it will increase from 1% to 2%. And then Latin America from 0.1, um, it will be uh, almost the same. And now in the map of the, uh, of the world, when you look at the distribution of diabetics, you will see that um, uh, in Europe, we have 71 million uh, uh, who will have diabetes in 2040. And uh, for the rest of the world, the number is increasing. And, uh, and so diabetics are everywhere, which means that diabetic pregnant women are distributed all over the world. And um, they might practice Ramadan fasting. Now, many studies has examined the prevalence and effect of Ramadan fasting among type 1 diabetics and type 2 diabetics. Uh, for those who doesn't know, what's, doesn't know the difference between type 1 and type 2, for type 1, Mainly it happens in children and um, uh, it's, uh, it happens as a result of complete absence of insulin production. For type 2 diabetes, it's mainly in adults and there is uh, insulin resistance or they have lack uh, 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 decreasing the amount of insulin uh, production. Now, 90% of healthy pregnant women practice Ramadan fasting. And um, many studies looked at the pregnant women who fast during Ramadan. There is... Uh, Contraindication, contradiction between the results of these studies. Some of the studies say that there are no effect of Ramadan fasting on them or on the outcome of the pregnancy. And some of the studies say that yes, there is some uh, effect. So among healthy pregnant women, there is a uh, uh, contradiction. And um, in the literature, it was documented also that the pregnant diabetic women also they fast during Ramadan, as I said earlier. Now, the purpose of, of this uh, paper is to explore the literature looking for the guidelines or some uh, uh, publications regarding um, uh, the management of this group of ladies. And um, I used a systematic database search using Scopus, PubMed, Medline, and Web uh, Science uh, using the keywords of Ramadan, fasting, uh, diabetes, and pregnancy. And this was conducted in November 2015. Now, I didn't find uh, enough studies. I only found four studies that uh, 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 talks about Ramadan fasting and uh, diabetic uh, women, pregnant diabetic women. Uh, two studies were conducted here in the United Kingdom and two studies um, in Islamic majority countries, mainly Malaysia. The sample size of, uh, of the whole, all the four studies is 348. 80% of the diabetic pregnant Muslim have fasted more than 15 days. So it's a reality. They do fast. Uh, although they are advised advice not to fast by uh, their physicians and by imams. Um, hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia episodes were also present. And there is an increase in, in the insulin dose uh, during Ramadan, which is uh, stated by uh, Noor Aslan uh, in the study that was conducted in Malaysia. Uh, there is um, most of these women they did not discuss uh, fasting with healthcare providers or imams, so they just decided to fast and they did it. 
no association between fasting and preterm delivery among all of the study uh, populations. Now this table <coughs> summarizes all the four studies and you can see here that fasting hours uh, uh, when the st uh, among the, the group who fasted in United Kingdom in 2014 were, which is published in 2014 were 18 hours. This is the longest. And um, uh, most of them they have type uh, they have GDM diabetes, gestational diabetes and um, the gestational age which is the age of the pregnancy when they did uh, the fasting uh, mainly in the second trimester we divide pregnancy into three trimesters the first trimester the first three months second three months is the second trimester third trimester is the last three months of the pregnancy um, uh, the number of fasting days, most of them, they fasted more than 15 days during the month of Ramadan, which is half of, uh, or more than half of, uh, of uh, Ramadan. And in the, the study that was conducted here in the UK, they fasted 20 uh, to 29 days. Mo uh, most of them, uh, 76 uh, of the women uh, in, the, in the study, they fasted 20 to 29 days. Now, uh, the studies uh, looked at the control of diabetes, uh, looked at uh, the, um, uh, the effect on um, um, the control of the diabetes, measuring protein in the urine, and um, the incidences of hypoglycemia, which is the low uh, blood sugar, and hyperglycemia, which is the high blood sugar. Uh, but none of these studies looked at uh, the birth outcome, except for uh, the one in the United States, uh, United Kingdom. And uh, by the way, for um, the second, the last one there, uh, this is a, a large cohort study, uh, was conducted among 10,000 women. And uh, the aim was not to look at uh, diabetes and pregnancy and its relation with fasting. The aim was to look into, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, to look at the health of those women. And they took a sub cohort uh, uh, more than 300, around 300 women, and they looked at, uh, at their practices during Ramadan fasting. And by chance, they found that there is um, around um, 20 women uh, uh, out of 128, um, they did fast during Ramadan and they have diabetes. So it, it was in the table, it wasn't mentioned inside the study, but I found it in one of the tables of the, of the results. And um, uh, as I said, the rest of the studies didn't look at the outcome of the pregnancy or the health of the baby, or they didn't follow up the, the babies after, uh, after delivery. Um, now, uh, this year in 2016, um, uh, in May, I think, yeah, in April, the International Diabetes Federation published the first Diabetes and Ramadan Practical Guidelines. I went through the guidelines, and this is after I did the review. Nothing is mentioned about gestational diabetes and the management of gestational diabetes during Ramadan among pregnant women. And um, even for um, uh, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, um, the guidelines were general. And you can see here that um, uh, they just mentioned that pregnant women with gestational diabetes are within the category one, which is fa very high risk uh, group, and uh, category, t category two also, um, which is the high risk uh, group with type two diabetes and pregnancy or gestational diabetes, uh, they shouldn't fast and they have to, if they want to fast, they have to um, uh, seek medical advice and, and th no other further um, guidelines or um, uh, any uh, indications on how to manage them during Ramadan. Thank you.